In this video I do measurements of the noise floor uh, with the two channel and correlation receiver and I'm using intuition uh, for the evaluation of the noise floor and that's wrong and I discovered that and I think maybe it could be amusing to see uh, how it is possible to detect errors and in the end I find out uh, how to do these things properly. And as you will see I'm not doing the measurements uh, I announced that I'm going to do uh, when the video starts. That will be the next video now that I know how to do these things properly. For information about the hardware I'm using in this video have a look at the previous one, NERDS 50, part 1 in this uh, series about trying to make a still better oscillator using traditional low-cost crystals. The two-channel uh, direct conversion receiver has now been running for about 30 hours uh, with a very weak signal as the input and that is because I want to look at the noise floor. Nearly 6 million uh, averages have been collected, 5.8 million. Uh, the correlation advantage is up at 36 dB, the white number here, and the uh, MACD Signal to noise improvement is estimated also to 33 dB. It means the noise is actually below uh, this value. And note that the noise has a structure here that looks pretty odd. And uh, you can see also an interesting phenomenon. If I measure the distance from the center here to a peak, this one, and I go on the other side, at the same distance I have a minimum. So when the noise is strong here, it is weak here. Uh, and I don't know anything about what that phenomenon is, but now I will evaluate the level of this noise at different frequencies. The system is not calibrated. I have just placed zero here because I will look at what the sensitivity is later. Here I have the offset, frequency offset from 10 megahertz, both sides at first and then only the upper side. Uh, the level in dB per hertz and the correlation advantage and the total. Uh, the peak here corresponds to a minimum here but with respect to the zero in DC which is 700 hertz offset from 10 megahertz. So in the measurements peaks and minima that I have taken here are not uh, symmetric with respect to 10 megahertz. They are symmetric with respect to a frequency 700 hertz below that. I have now added a weak signal at an offset of 5 kilohertz and you can see the level here. And I will step it up in steps of 2 kilohertz. And you can see the mirror suppression is the same. Not perfect, because this is not a calibrated system. On this point, where the noise is low, 
this is how high the signal goes. And then at this point where the noise is high, sensitivity is the same. So uh, the noise floor goes up and down, but the sensitivity is the same. And I think this has to be a property of the sound card. Now the signal level into the receiver is minus 100 dBm. And I connected this generator directly to that receiver input. And the level I read here is minus 77.3. The red points here, that is the noise at frequencies above 10 MHz, and the green is the noise at frequencies below 10 MHz, and it oscillates up and down as you can see. Uh, the green points up here is the sensitivity, that's the level of the signal generator at different frequencies. And you can see it goes down uh, near DC. That's because of the sound card. And it's not perfectly flat. It goes a small slope and then it steeps rapidly at, what is it? 40 kilohertz, 42, 44. This is 44 kilohertz. And then this is the onset of anti-aliasing, the digital filter inside the ADC probably. And the vertical scale is 1 dB per division here for this amplitude response curve. I have connected now this noise source to the input. It's from my uh, noise figure meter. It is set to a noise figure of 3 dB. Well, it has drifted by 0.1 dB. It has been running for a long time and it is on the low range. When this is set to zero, uh, the noise would increase by 3 dB on a noise-free amplifier. Means that at zero, uh, the noise temperature is 3 dB above room temperature. So now when it is set to 3 dB, the noise temperature is 6 decibels above room temperature. That is minus 168 uh, dBm per hertz. And here is what I see after collecting for many hours. The uh, Correlation advantage at this particular frequency is 17 dB, while the uh, improvement could have been 32 dB because of the very large number of averages. So I will uh, measure the uh, level of the green trace by taking the sum of the reading here and the correlation advantage for several frequencies. I have set the noise figure meter now for 11 dB noise figure in the high range and one. It is no longer necessary to collect many averages to get a significant uh, correlation reading. So I uh, evaluate these data points also. Now with a noise level at minus 160 dBm per hertz, I get a fairly flat response, as you have seen already on the screen. Uh, the slope of the line I have drawn here, it's the same as the slope of the frequency response. And Errors are less than half a dB, roughly. Uh, sometimes there could be a weak spur that I didn't carefully avoid, as I have done here when the level was much lower. Anyway, uh, I think this is a reliable thing. 
Uh, I have placed a line 14 decibels below. It's here. And uh, the measured noise is significantly lower. I think this has to be caused by rounding errors in the digital processing of the A to D converter. It samples at some frequency high above 96 kilohertz and then it decimates, it filters and decimates and rounding errors may mean loss of signal, loss of signal energy. Uh, already at uh, minus 168 dBm per hertz, that error is pretty small. Uh, in the mid-range from 6 to 25 or 30 kilohertz, the average correlation is 10.6. Uh, this means that I can uh, set the cal calibration of Linrod to show the proper signal level, uh, which is then minus 160 dBm per hertz uh, with the correlation 10.6 included. Now I read here minus 149.4 and correlation is 10.6 which means that correlation and what I read here sums up to minus 160. And that's the level of the noise that I'm sending in from the noise head, this one. I've set this generator to a level of minus 80 dBm and connected it to the receiver uh, to check the result. And here is what I see. Uh, I don't see minus 80. I see an error of uh, 3 and a half dB. Uh, so, I try another generator. And look at the level from that. And it differs, uh, but not much. So, it means that the calibration I just made is not correct. So I set the uh, test meter to show minus 80 for these generators. So here is one of the generators, 0.06 dB above. And Here is the other generator. Point oh four dB below. So uh, my generators tell me now that the correct the calibration is correct, and I used only a short cable from here to here instead of the one onto the noise source. So I will check the noise source again. I connected the noise head again and after a pretty short time I can read uh, what I have. Minus 152.7 and 10.6 in the correlation advantage. That sums up to 163.4. Uh, 3 decibels uh, below what I expected, because the noise figure meter is set now to 11 dB. I must make a mistake of some kind, I don't know exactly what. Uh, to find out where I have made a mistake, I'm using this setup. A device under test. Oops. Uh, to start with, I'm just using the Wenzel LO, followed by a 6 dB amplifier. 
Then there are 20 dB couplers, one to inject a reference signal, another to measure the level of the reference signal as compared to the signal from the device under test. The signal is split into two with a 90 degree hybrid. One goes to another hybrid which is part of that direct channel correlation system uh, which you can see in the previous video much more about and which I have measured the noise floor of and where something isn't right. Uh, and the other signal goes into a selective load at 10.0 followed by a quarter wave and a notch filter. Uh, the selective load uh, passes the signal 50 kHz away and more but now I am looking at uh, well 96.48 that's not uh, 50 kHz it's a little bit less. The frequency separation is only 35 kHz uh, that makes the impedance through here not perfectly 50 ohms, so I have to put an extra impedance match here uh, to be able to set the impedance to 50 ohms at this point, means input here. Uh, this will not affect the signal on 10 MHz because that is uh, loaded by 50 ohms from this and this is not visible from here. And then there is quarter wave and a notch, a quarter wave and a notch. And then again an impedance match which will affect only the 9.65 megahertz uh, signal. And then amplifiers and finally an SDR IP. I have used this setup previously when measuring sideband noise at 50 kHz separation and above. Now I will compare this system which is very obvious in how to interpret calibration uh, with this system to see if they give the same result or whether I have a 3 decibel discrepancy between them. First I will look at impedance in this point. And this is what it looks like. And as you can see it is very close to 50 ohms at the two frequencies. 9.9648 I have taken that frequency and 10.0 and it shows 49.8 and 49.2 ohms resistive. And here is the uh, two-channel direct conversion receiver. Uh, there is leak through from the local oscillators. I'm running very low power on the network analyzer because there is very high gain on the notch system. But this direct conversion receiver can tolerate more power so I can change that and set power is let's say minus 10 and then we can see the impedance much better. The direct conversion receiver saturates before the notch filter system so I have a stepped attenuator here with which I can reduce the signal level and possibly introduce some sideband noise but I think this attenuator is good enough not to make any problem at the levels currently uh, under study. The usual procedure this is the Perseus and I have set the 10 MHz signal to show zero on the S meter graph and then I switch on the signal at 35 kilohertz offset it comes here here it is 
and then I will adjust the level for it to show minus 60 like this 59.97 then I select that signal 9.9648 and adjust the S meter so it shows minus 60 on the direct conversion radio and also here is the SDR IP and I select the same signal and adjust the S meter and now it shows minus 59.999 and then I switch off that signal generator and here comes the noise floor and here also here I have to press ALT Z to clear the correlation and Z to clear that also and here I have to wait here I can get the result almost immediately and it shows minus 173.5 here I have to wait for the green curve to be less noisy means I want the blue dB value to be at least 6 decibels above the white now I have collected many enough correlation spectra so the correlation advantage is 15 dB and the reading is minus 159.2 now there is a difference of 0.7 dB not much but not within what I had hoped for so I check here uh, again minus 173.5 so I can change the bandwidth and I make it a little bit narrower and then I wait for a while and here uh, I can step the frequency well first I can make the bandwidth narrower like that and I have to collect new data so now I wait a little not so much because correlation is already present now I see 173.35 uh, the peak here is fairly sharp and that is because of the extra uh, impedance match I had to add to make this work as a close separation at 35 kilohertz I mean to make the impedances right so I correct this and it goes in the wrong direction 173.35 so I reduce the signal by 10 dB that's the signal from the device under test that is split into the two received systems and I don't make any recalibration I just see how much the noise goes down in the two systems here in the notch filter system the noise goes down from 173 to this new value which is minus 180.5 after quite some time uh, I have collected enough uh, correlation averages so the level uh, of the white spectrum is 159.2 and the correlation advantage is 23 but there is a problem uh, maybe you can see uh, there are spurs here at this frequency for example you can see the green dots are much higher than the background here and also on this side there is a spur so I step the frequency in steps of 100 Hertz up and down to look at the correlation advantage how it varies 1 2 3 
four, five, six, seven. And that was downwards. Then I go the other direction. So, like this. One, two, three, four, five. Here is a spur. Six, seven. So it seems 23 and a half is a reasonable uh, average. I just make the bandwidth much larger, like that. And now I got the spur included. So I reduce the bandwidth. So, 23 and a half. I have increased the power by 6 dB approximately by adding one more amplifier. Uh, the noise I see without having changed the calibration is minus 168.3 uh, in the notch arrangement. The direct conversion radio with correlation has been running for quite some time now and the correlation spectrum is very flat. Uh, the advantage is 9.6 or 9.7, maybe 9.8. It goes up and down a little bit. That's because of the statistics of the white spectrum. Uh, so let's make it 9.8 and add to that minus 158.8 that sums up to 168.6 not very far from the 168.3 I got from the notch filters within parenthesis is the differences in dB between the different power levels so uh, these two systems agree perfectly well if you take into account the different sensitivity that is the noise floor they have I have connected this noise head to the uh, receiver with the notch filters in order to measure the noise figure and I have calibrated it to show zero with the cold noise head and I switch on this instrument it's set now to 8.2 dB. And I hope for an increase of 3 dB here. Three point one dB. So it's pretty close. A little better statistics. Still three point one. So maybe 8.0 will be better. At the end here. 3.0. So the noise figure of this is system now is 8 dB. The noise figure of 8 dB means that the noise floor should be at 8 dB above minus 174, that's minus 166 dBm per hertz. So I calibrated to show minus 166 dB per hertz here. And I connected the signal generator at minus 90 dBm. And look what happens here. Well, what I can read out is, oh, there is a bug in the inner that I haven't yet corrected. I don't know where it is. It's, of course, related to multi-threading. But I read minus 90.2. This is a 
very good accuracy and the noise figure meter and the signal generator agree perfectly well. This means that the noise floor I see when I have set this instrument to 17 dB for the noise figure is 17.35 <laughs> above minus 174. It means what I see is the excess noise. So it was not correct what I did before saying that the noise uh, level when I have set it to 11 would be 14 dB above Royce room temperature. Uh, it is the excess noise I should have used and that is 11. This seems to be the correct math to use. Uh, the noise figure in dB and in linear scale we call it K then uh, I use K plus 1 uh, and convert to decibels and uh, add to the room temperature which is minus 174. Then I get these values and this is the noise power, the noise level at the output of the noise head. I was using min minus 160, but I should have used minus 162.7. So I compute what would happen when I set the noise figure meter to 6 dB. My previous thinking would be 9 dB uh, above that, uh, which would lead to minus 165 dBc per hertz. But now, uh, applying proper math, I expect minus 167. And I can verify this by checking a very low noise amplifier. The amplifier I'm using now has a noise figure of about 1 dB. So I have set the noise floor to show minus 173 uh, dBm per hertz. And I switch on the noise source and it's set to 1 dB. And then I should expect a 3 dB increase of the noise power if it really has a 1 dB noise figure. And it goes from minus 173 to minus 170. So this is correct. Then I set this to 6 dB, like that, and now I can evaluate the noise power, 166.7. That's pretty close to 167 and it's not close at all to minus 165. And of course the measurement here does not take the noise of the receiver into account. So uh, it's clear, uh, not what I had guessed, uh, it's something else. I have corrected this diagram. Uh, this curve is at minus 162.7 dBm per hertz. This one at minus 169.2 means that minus 174 dBm per hertz is this line and what I actually measure is significantly below that. So it seems I need more signal into the sound card to make this procedure work all the way down to the lowest levels. Uh, I cannot uh, amplify on the RF side because the mixers saturate so I need some more uh, gain on the audio side. I now look at the level of the injected signal. 
and I have expanded the S meter graph so I can see a tenth of a dB easily and you can see the distortion I get not only one signal I have some audio overtones but now I will increase the strong signal until I see 0.1 dB compression of the injected signal Ten dB more, and you can see here nothing happened. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Well, this is sort of the maximum level I could ever use. And there is a lot of high order overtones, distortion in the audio suck. Or maybe it is the mixers. Anyway, the purpose of this was to establish what is the strongest signal I send into the sound card now. And the margin is 19.2 dB in the channel where the signal is strongest. So it means I can increase the audio gain by about 15 dB without any problems. That is as long as I have the notch filter in line of course. I have increased the audio gain by a factor of 5 that's 25 in power or 14 decibels. Uh, here I am looking at the signal at uh, 35 kilohertz below 10 megahertz and I switch on more signal. Uh, like that. And I have about 0.1 dB compression. Uh, and then I look at the amplitude margin. It's 2 decibels. So now the system is optimized to saturate on the audio side at the same time as on the RF side. This is the signal I was sending into the direct conversion receiver. And you can see that the main signal at 10 megahertz is plus 13.3 dBm uh, while the signal 35 kilohertz below is at minus 46 and a half or 46.8 or something well that's the accuracy of this thing pretty good actually, 60 dB below 13.3 is 46.7. So I have connected again this noise head, set it to 17 uh, dB, it's on that scale, and then I clear the correlation spectrum again and wait for a stable reading. It will not take a long time anymore. I have calibrated the S meter to show minus 152.5 and the correlation advantage is 4.5 <coughs> <coughs> and together that means uh, minus 157 and 157, that is uh, 17 dB below minus 174. Uh, I should have had 156.9, but 0.1 dB is of no concern. I will switch off the current on the noise head and look at the noise floor, what it is now. 
I verify the calibration by injecting a signal at minus 100 dBm. And then look here. And it says minus 99.6. That's close enough. I have set the noise figure meter to 0 dBm. And it's not perfectly stable. I have adjusted it now. And it's on the low range. So I clear correlation and wait. The noise floor I see after waiting long enough is minus 154.6 and then minus 18.5 or 18.4 perhaps. The sum of those numbers is minus 173 dBm per hertz. That's surprisingly low. I had expected uh, minus 171 according to this way of reasoning. Uh, so I wait for a while and check once more. I tried to set the somewhat narrower bandwidth and evaluate again. 154.6 plus 18.5. And the sum of that is 173.1. So I cannot explain this, but this is what I find. Now I switch off this instrument. So there is only a room temperature 50 ohm resistor connected and I press Alt Z to uh, clear the coloration spectrum and I will have to wait a long time uh, until tomorrow I guess. I have collected many enough averages, uh, 4.3 million and I'm getting a, a 5 dB margin from uh, the observed correlation advantage to the theoretical maximum. So I can rely on the result here. Uh, the north floor is at minus 154.75 and the correlation advantage 28.3. Those two numbers add up to minus 183.1 dBm per hertz. That's 9 decibels below room temperature. And obviously that cannot be the temperature I see from the cold noise source. Because that is a room temperature 50 ohm resistor at minus 174. So uh, what I am measuring is not the temperature of the device under test, it's the excess temperature, the temperature above the room temperature that I have in the unit under test. And the mechanism is like this. Here I have now connected a 50 ohm resistor and here is a 50 ohm resistor. Uh, the noise in this comes out as correlated noise in the two channels. And the noise in the resistor I have here also comes as noise in the, these two channels. But the noise from these two resistors have the opposite phase uh, with respect to the two channels. Which means that the noise from one cancels the noise from the other. And not perfectly, there is a point one. There is a 10 dB below room temperature difference that I can observe. But the actual noise I'm measuring, I have to add room temperature to that. So I'm just measuring room temperature now. So the lesson to be learned. I'm measuring uh, the excess noise with this system. But what I want to have is the total noise, including the thermal noise of the source. 
So I have to add the power of minus 174 dB per hertz to the mesh value I'm measuring. And I didn't understand that before in this video and you can see my mistakes and how I gradually make uh, various measurements until I get this understanding which is now new and uh, well you are never too old to learn something.